typical Sunday morning. These people are homeless, and they're getting ready to be fed by a local volunteer group from St. Boniface Catholic Church. The day before the group feeds the homeless, they get together at one of the group leaders' houses and prepares the food. Many blessings are said before they start, and 200 sandwiches in the end are made and bought by the volunteers with their own money. It is important to keep into mind that the sandwiches are simply the hook, as they actually have to listen to the word of God before receiving it. A lot of love and dedication comes from this group, as they feel each Sunday is at least helping one person. Although nobody is challenging groups now, there was 100 people gathered downtown in 2014 one evening to take a stand against the city's restriction for organizations wanting to feed the homeless. People came with their voices and signs outside the Fort Lauderdale courthouse to protest. The law in 2014 made it required that groups must bring restrooms and a permit if they wanted to feed the homeless. After a long debate, the people won, and now anyone can feed the homeless. The first stop the group makes is at the Salvation Army in downtown Fort Lauderdale. Once they arrive, they all discuss a short message from the church service the day before and say a small prayer which starts the act of giving forward. As soon as I arrived, I spotted people literally laying down sleeping on the sidewalk. Around 6 in the morning, the Salvation Army kicks homeless out back onto the street and lets them in around 6 in the evening. The only way they're allowed in is by being sober. Once they heard the church group walking towards them, they woke up, and a few more individuals came to start prayer service. It seemed as though they were very accustomed to this Sunday ritual. He tells us that we have to repent, and if we don't repent, we will perish like the 18, that some tower fell over them. The homeless gathered together and received the word of God. One young man, the age of 23, read a scripture. Cheers, I heard to see someone my own age on the street, but the reality is is that being homeless can happen to anyone from any walk of life. Soon after the word of God, food is passed out along with coffee and any clothing volunteers might have to give to those who need them. Shirts, shoes, blankets, and more are usually at the center of the circle, and anyone can grab what they need. The next stop the group goes to is downtown Fort Lauderdale's public library. The front of the public library is where tons of people are aware of the homeless hanging out at in South Florida. It's their main spot. You may have even seen it on the news as it was formerly known as Tent City. The police and public figures were trying to shut it down because it was infested with diseases, mice, and human feces. Today, the library is completely clean of any tents and diseases, but many homeless still feel comfortable right in front like before. On Sunday before the group arrives, the homeless wait around. They have a set structured system on this day. They know on this particular day they will receive the word of God and also food. Easter. Easter! You got it. What happens in Easter? Bunch what, money. what is the book? <laughs> What'd you say? Bunch money. For some homeless, it brings a warm, familiar feeling to those who remember growing up religious. Attending church every Sunday was something that they used to do and it's a feeling of nostalgia that many explain feels great. Our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. The group gathers together in a short prayer before passing out the meals, much like they did at the previous stop. Some of the homeless are even comfortable enough to say their own prayers in front of everyone, as they are thankful to see another day. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, Lord. Say thank you, Father, for everything that you had did, and thank you for the thing that you go do for us, Father. Father God, we thank you for your Son, Jesus, your Son, Him, and 
So that's what Father God, so we may live, though. Directly after prayer, people line up in a long line in order to get the food. One noticeable individual is a man with a backpack. He himself is actually homeless and he's been on the street for years, but loves to give to his community and his fellow friends too. Another individual to pay special attention to is the man in the back with the hat. He recently got back onto the streets and told me his personal story. Brandon tells me that since he was a little boy, he had to start taking care of himself. He didn't have a relationship with either one of his parents and ended up being involved in a toxic relationship with his now ex-girlfriend. I ended up getting robbed when I was with her. Shortly after his breakup, he fell into an addiction. Brandon says it was never with any super heavy drugs, but he just wasn't able to get back onto his feet like before when he hadn't met her. Three years of that with her, and then I ended up breaking up with her and moving up to Michigan. Um, like from being homeless down here in my hometown, St. Lucie County, I was jumping from uh, family to friends, hopping, uh, like couch hopping and whatnot, trying not to stay too long. After moving to Michigan from Florida, Brandon's uncle, whom he was staying with at the time, kicked him out because he fell back into drugs and couldn't find a steady job. Brandon found himself heartbroken again by a girlfriend he met out there and decided it was time for a change. He wanted back to Florida. And we were walking 95, we got pulled over by cops twice. We backtracked like 20 miles the first time we got picked up and then the second time we uh, ended up actually getting a ride down to a gas uh, bus station, like truck stop area. And a Greyhound pulled yeah. up. And we were, I, was like, I was like, guys, we gotta start paying attention for it to say Florida. If it says anywhere in Florida, we're hopping on the beach. I don't care if we got a downsize. I'm like, I'm leaving with her without everybody to get off. And we waited specifically for the bus driver to get off. Uh -huh. And we got on, we hopped all the way to the back and we all spread out to Jacksonville. And we were like, oh my God, yes, we're here. I'm like, I don't give a fuck if we don't get, get back on the bus. I'm just like, we're here in Florida. And from Fort Pierce all the way down to here, we rode, rode a bike all the way until we got to West Palm. We ditched the bikes and hopped on Amtrak. The way that the system's set up down here is a lot different than what I'm used to in my county or uh, my home county or up in Michigan. This piece of cardboard that is being moved is actually somebody's bed. Brandon told me about the living conditions for the homeless in South Florida. He said that people sleep on anything they can use and says that nobody seems to care about the homeless except for these groups. The purpose of the ministry is to evangelize. It's to take the word of the Lord to the streets. And we do this by a hook. And the hook is a sandwich. So we bring sandwiches, we bring uh, bananas, juice, coffee as the hook. So we call that the physical nourishment. Before we give them physical nourishment, we read the gospel and we preach. This is the spiritual nourishment. That's the real main purpose of the, of the ministry. We do this in the name of Jesus, because we are Christians that believe that if you have Jesus in your heart, you'll make all the right decisions, hopefully to avoid the situation that these homeless people are in. So we hope that with us preaching to them and talking to them about the love of Jesus, they can make that right decision that, make, that can make that day easier. It's a day-by-day day step. I've been homeless since 2009. Since May of this year. I've been homeless for like a year now. You don't want to be in this situation. You don't want to know where you're going to be laying your head down at night. I don't wish nothing like this on my worst enemy. It's the scariest feeling in the world. We're seeing people dying out here, sometimes slowly, sometimes quickly. Last year, uh, more than 10% of the chronic homeless population in the city of Fort Lauderdale died on the streets. Although this group has been serving to the homeless every Sunday for four years straight, doesn't eliminate the fact that after they leave, the homeless are still homeless. Anyone can make a difference in these people's lives. Whether you decide to come out and feed the homeless or donate things you no longer need, it's all helping someone in the long run. The homeless are people too and should not ever be forgotten. <laughs>